encounters improve the quality of our lives. Encounters come to reveal to us the futility of life without God. Encounters will activate purpose and calling in our life. Encounters come to restore intimacy and fellowship. The land of Zebulun, the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people which sat in darkness saw a great light, and to them which sat in the region and the shadow of death, light is sprung up. Encounters come to restore intimacy. Encounters come to reveal to us the futility of life. If you don't have a relationship with God, anything of value can become God to you. Welcome to Encounter Jesus Ministries, sustaining an experiential knowledge of God and walking in the fullness of our eternal ordination. Now, listen to God's servant, Apostle Oropo Michael, as he takes us through an encounter with the Word. toward heaven tonight our time is very short let's just honor the lord this evening vocalize your expectations the bible said without every contradiction it said the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut short and so the power of god moves in the direction of your expectation is that jesus entered his own city and he could not do any mighty works there because of their unbelief and so even if jesus were to be here in person if you don't have expectations, if you don't believe, not much can be done for you. Can you please speak to the Father? Pour out your heart. Say what you want to see. Say what you want to receive. He said, gather vessels. Gather not a few. Because the moment the vessels get filled, the oil is flowing. And so the flow of oil is not a function of the minister. It's a function of the recipients. Tonight, I wish and I pray that I have hunger in the house who are making a demand like Bartimaeus, son of David. Today, my son, you will not pass me by. Can you make that demand tonight? Don't be just blind eyes open, deaf ears open, change in the presence of God. But if you make it a religion, it will be another service. Ask the Lord for an encounter tonight. Ask him for an encounter tonight. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. We give you glory. We honor your name. We magnify you, precious Lord. Thank you for the privilege of being in your presence again tonight. Lord, we ask that you visit us with a mighty visitation. And let your name alone be glorified. Thank you, Father, because no hand lifted here tonight, no heart open here tonight, will go without an encounter. Do what only you can do and take all the praise. Take all the praise. In Jesus' precious name, we have declared. Are you excited tonight? Can you give the Lord a shout one more time? Somebody shout glory! You may be seated. God bless you. Thank you so much. Tonight, I just want to build a foundation for some of the things that I'm trusting the Lord to release upon us. And then tomorrow morning, I'll be ministering to people. Of course, tonight God will be touching people. But I just want to establish the foundations of what I'll be teaching. Because my teaching in this conference is a two-fold, a two-packed teaching. The second part of my teaching is the part where you receive. The first part of my teaching is to show you the protocol because I have studied the word of the Lord and I've seen the way God operates. Most times God wants to make you before he gives to you. He said, follow me, I will make you fishers of men. Because if you are given without being made, even what you have can destroy you. And so oftentimes when I have the opportunity to share, I would give you the protocol the requirements for the things you want to receive, and then I show you how to take hold of what you want to receive. The receiving part usually 
is the easy part. But it will take a man who is made to sustain what he has received. Our father here has done what he's been doing for decades. And he has kept on it, making progress, making impact, because he was made. He didn't just receive something. He has become something. And on the strength of that, he is able to sustain what he has. And so we'll look at the protocol for shining tonight. And then tomorrow, we'll see what you require in order to arise. Daddy already began to touch some of the things I would have talked about. But it's still fine. It makes the work easier. Because the easiest way to arise is to receive the word of God. When you hear the word, the word literally has the capacity of lifting you up. Ezekiel said, when he spoke to me, the word carried me up. So when the word comes to you, even if you are not standing, the word will lift you up. The man was by the pool of Bethesda for 38 years. He said, rise up. He stood up and began to walk. He was at the beautiful gate for a long period of time. He said, rise up. And he pulled him up and strength entered his feet and he stood up. So the word has the capacity to lift you up. But before we begin to speak those words in your direction, what are the protocols that you must undertake, undergo to become a man that will make him when you rise? Because this protocol will open your eyes to the responsibility aspect of what we want to look at before you receive the grace aspect. Because the responsibility aspect is what will make you. The grace aspect is what will give you. There are many persons who only rely on what God can do or will do for them and they are not looking at what they should do in order to work with God. The reason you find few men is because only few are willing to do what they should do in order to work with God. God has made everything we require available to us in abundance. But the reason many are not becoming men God can bank on is because they are not paying the price to work with the Spirit of God. When people come to God's presence, they are only interested in receiving and going away. But when you read the Bible, you will hardly find people who just received and left becoming fundamental figures in Scripture. From Genesis to Revelation, is the men that walked with God and were made that became the bulk of the stories of Scripture. And so you can find a whole nation, a whole generation, sometimes only three men stand out. Whereas God benevolently provided for the whole nation. But those men are not going to be part of the story of God. They are not going to be part of the history of God. Because God is not writing his story with those that are receiving from him. He's writing his story with those who are walking with him. He's writing his story with those who are participating with him. So this conference is not just a conference where you come to receive. Yes, you are going to receive a lot. But it's also a conference where men will be made. And so let's begin our journey from Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1. Elohim Adonai Elohim Adonai Elohim Adonai Before I begin from the scriptures tonight, I want you to know this. God is in need of men. The body of Christ is in need of men. Nations are in need of men. Men are on high demand, but men are scarce. There are people, but we don't have men. And when I say men, I'm not talking about the male gender. I'm talking about people that have grown to a level where they can be entrusted with the burdens of God and the burdens of nations. They are very few. God is not in need of men because he's not sovereign. In his sovereignty, he doesn't need anyone to be God. But the way he designed this system is such that he will partner with men to fulfill his agenda. It is his love that made him design the system that way. When you read the scripture, Jesus ascended to heaven. He had finished his assignment. He came in bodily form in the incarnation. He walked through the earth, walked miracles. He died. He was buried. He rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven. He was coronated king in bodily form because he was king as spirit. 
but he needed to become king in human form so that man can participate in God's economy. So he was coronated king as a man. He now discovered that the disciples he raised went back fishing. And the Bible said Jesus left his throne after resurrection, came back and went to meet them at the riverside and called them back. What do you think you are doing? I came to earth, I condescended to become a man. I walked on earth for 33 and a half years. I was beaten, I suffered hunger, I slept in weakness like a frail man. As if it was not enough, I was accused like a criminal. I died on the cross. I endured the pain of death. I was buried. I rose again. Now I have committed an assignment to you and what you can think is to go a fishing. You go a fishing after all I've done. He had to leave his throne to come back because God needs men. If there are no men, his agenda cannot be fulfilled. If God has an agenda in a quiet bomb, it will take men for that agenda to be fulfilled. And only God knows what role we should play. You may just be the one God needs to be the voice. You may just be the one God needs to handle governmental power. You may just be the one God needs to handle economic power. And you may not have been aware of your significance in God's agenda. This conference will open your eyes to see that God needs men. And you can just be the man God is waiting for. Number two, the body of Christ needs men. If men don't rise, the church will be crushed. We are an endangered species. The most hated set of people on earth are Christians. Every government in every nation wants Christians annihilated because the world hates light and we are the carriers of light. And so anybody who carries light, they want him crushed because they don't, know, they don't want the truth. And we preach the truth and we live the truth and we talk the truth. And so because the church represents the truth, the governments of the world want the church annihilated. Men want the church annihilated. And so for the church to stand, men that have the capacity to hold back the gates of hell must rise. He said, when such men rise, he said, the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. So if men don't rise, something will go wrong. There are many nations. Let me give you an instance. When you read your Bible, you read Ephesus and you read the mighty works Paul did. If you go to Turkey today, 99% of Turkey don't know Jesus. They don't believe in Jesus. Why is it so? The Holy Ghost is still alive, active as God. Jesus is still active as God. The Father is still active as God. But men are no longer there. Jesus was worshipped there because Paul was around. And Paul will go from city to city. He will preach Christ. He will manifest signs and wonders. So it was not just the presence of the Holy Ghost that made Ephesus a godly nation. It was the presence of partners on earth like Paul the Apostle. The moment they were withdrawn from the scene, few hundred years later, that region no longer believes in Jesus. 99% is now Islam. Why is it so? Because the church needs men for the church to march. If men don't rise, the church will not march. And so when we talk about the church, it's not just buildings. The biggest cathedral that was built there is still standing, but today it's a museum. So the reason the Holy Ghost comes here and the power of God descends here and miracles happen and people are baptized in the Holy Ghost is because men are standing. When men are absent, the Holy Ghost will want to move. He cannot move. So the church needs men. And then nations need men. Because nations are in darkness. They don't know. The wisest nations that we looked up to many years ago, thinking they had the necessary intelligence to deliver the world from bondage, have gone back and backward in thinking. And so you go to the wisest nation today, they can't define marriage. Meanwhile, our primary school students can define marriage. Today, when you say, who is a woman? It's a subject of great debate. They don't know who a woman is. And these are the wisest nations. You know what? Because the spirit of delusion has taken over nations. And the nations don't know that there is a judgment of nations that is coming. Do you know why Sodom and Gomorrah is not standing? It's because the man that was sent there didn't raise men. And so when judgment came, Lot could not raise 10 righteous men. If 10 righteous men were in Sodom, 
Sodom would have been standing till today. And so nations need men. If men don't rise, nations will not only collapse, they will be judged. And many nations will not appear in the world to come. And so God needs men. The body of Christ needs men. Nations need men. So when you look at yourself, don't look at yourself like that sister that needs food to eat. Look at yourself as an answer to a generation. When you look at yourself, don't look at yourself as that brother that doesn't have a job, that is hoping that his government will support him. Look at yourself as an answer to a nation. Look at yourself as the answer to the cry of your generation. But you see, that will not happen except as light comes to you. That is why the Bible said in Isaiah chapter 60 from verse 1, it said, Arise, shine, for your light is come. Three things. Number one, it's your duty to arise. Number two, if you don't arise, you won't shine. Shining comes after you have arisen. And it is a man who is shining that is an answer to his generation. If you are not shining, you are part of the crowd. And no nation benefits from crowd. Crowd is a body. Because the crowd is a consumer part of a generation. No nation benefits from crowd. Crowd is a body. You cannot afford to be part of the crowd. But for you to shine, you must arise. And if you arise and shine, although the light is there, it will be useless. So or even though light is the answer to men, men must arise in order to shine so that they can make the most of light. Tonight, I want to show you five things that to arise entails. And every one of us must do it if we will be relevant in our generation. Please hear me and hear me well. This lying down and saying if it will happen, it will happen is a scam. This lying down and saying if God wants it to happen, it will happen is a scam. God is the one telling you to arise. God is the one telling you to shine. He has brought the light, but you must arise to shine. Otherwise, the light will be useless. Many persons are lazy and wasting away because they are thinking an angel will come and hold them and carry them up. It will not happen. Ask those that have gone ahead of you and ask those who are making impact. They will tell you the prices they paid. Because if it was cheap, all of us would be shining. The reason few people are shining in the generation means it is not cheap. Something was done for people to rise up and to shine. And so in this conference, you must learn and pay the price. And I'm going to use a case study of people that were nothing in their generation. So you know that you don't need any advantage to rise and shine. I will use people who were slaves. I will use people who were shepherds, who were left at the backside of the desert for nothing to let you know that anybody can rise up, anybody can shine. You don't have to be the son of the governor to shine. You don't have to be the son of a senator to shine. You don't have to be the son of anybody to shine. All you need to do is to know what it means to arise and then to take the responsibility to arise. You can be a slave and shine. Joseph showed us that. You can be a prisoner and shine. Joseph showed us that. You can be a shepherd boy forgotten in the wilderness and shine. David showed us that. When Samuel came to David's house, he said, bring your sons. Can you imagine? God have sent me to anoint a king and the man forgot David. Does that not give you an idea the quality of life David was living? If somebody comes to your house and tells you there's an advantage for your children, will you forget anyone? To show you that David was literally forgotten. He was not a part of that family. You know where David was when that special occasion was going on? He was with sheep in the wilderness. And they forgot about him. In fact, they didn't care. A lion came, it would have killed David. A bear came, it would have killed David. And you know that if David did not tell Saul, we would not have known because nobody cared. When he came back and said, I escaped a lion, he said, get out. Even if you die, what does your life imply? Your life means nothing. That's how they saw David. And seven sons walked past somewhere. No one was there. The man still did not remember. Okay, if God didn't choose any of this one, I have another son. He didn't remember because he didn't consider David a son. It was somewhere that asked, don't you have any other child? He said, well, there's a boy somewhere in the wilderness. I don't know if God can pick that kind of person. Everybody hearing me tonight that your generation has given up on you, you will be the chosen one. Can 
you imagine a father you presented seven sons you forgot one even though god rejected all of them you still didn't remember that there was another child until the prophet asked is there no other stone he answered carelessly there is somebody somewhere they may have trivialized you this is your season to shine arise he says shine your light has come but i need to show you something now from this part of the story that's when grace came but what i will show you are the things that happened before grace came so that you will be the one choosing because david was not sleeping david was not lying down there was something david was doing and that is the book of my teaching tonight for a generation that needs to arise there are five requirements and if those requirements are kept whether they like you or not whether they hate you whether they gang up against you you will still shine and you will be the one chosen did you read the life of joseph his brothers hated him they sold him as a slave for him to die and waste at the end of the day he was the answer so the hatred of people will mean nothing if you know what to do the anger of people will mean nothing if you know what to do listen some of us who are standing here talking to you if it was in the hands of man would have been crushed but you see the way this thing works only god makes men he said let us make man in our own image after our likeness he said follow me i will make you i will make there is something you will do that your enemy's presence will mean nothing arise shine for your light is come what does it mean to arise what are the protocols that everybody who wants to arise and shine what are the protocols that must undergird his life number one the capacity to discern your season not every season is the same not every season is the same there are many christians today who are where they are because they miss their windows for those of us who fly you know what i'm talking about if you miss your flight by five minutes all the effort you put was a waste sometimes you come to the airport you are seeing the plane they say it's airborne you will have to go back home and wait for the next time of flight so if you know how to live your life strategically you will discern the time of the flight and you will be available before the flight time this same flight we caught to arrive here in Aquaibon. there were many people who came to the counter they told them they have closed the counter and they went back home the plane was there but they missed their time the reason many don't arise even though they are laboring so hard is because they don't understand the laws of seasons if you miss your season your effort is a waste there are many christians who are doing what they should do at the wrong time when they should pray that's when they are sleeping and so when others are sleeping that's when they are praying so the time for the arrest become a time for body may god help you to have the discernment to understand your season the reason most of these men succeeded was because they knew their season david knew the season to fight with bears because if he missed that season goliath would have killed him David knew the season to stay quiet and humble, learning the covenant. When he confronted Goliath, he had what his brothers didn't have. Eliab had a huge shoulder. And so when he comes out, he moves with shoulder. When he met Saul, Saul was bigger than him. And then to make things worse, when they met Goliath, Goliath was bigger than both him and Saul put together. And so he discovered that big shoulder doesn't work. But you know what David was doing? When they were walking with shoulders david was learning the covenant of god and so when david met goliath he was not intimidated by his size goliath kept shouting everybody was quaking he said i come against you in the name of the god of israel that you have defied so he knew what his brothers didn't know when did he learn it so when they were doing politics around their father trying to do who will be the favorite son david was studying so when he went to the wilderness he opened the torah he was learning something he was searching something he was asking questions he was seeking god and he was learning what they didn't know the day of manifestation 
he came with what he had that no other person has some of you are listening to me here this is the time for you to study but while you are in the university you are going looking for clubs on friday you don't need a club now and you may not need it in your life this is a time to study chemistry this is a time to study biology but while they are studying you are looking for club and your priority is hair and, and gown and so when your season comes when you should speak you don't know what to say because that that corridor will require some level of talk eloquence for you to be choosing but you see when you should have studied you went clubbing you will now discover that you cannot carry clubs to the season of your manifestation and so all the pleasure will die you would have buried your destiny christians don't know the power of seasons the bible said in first chronicles chapter chapter 12 verse 32 it said the sons of isaac they had understanding of times and seasons and they knew what israel ought to do he said the heads of them were 200 all their brethren were at their commandment a man who understands seasons and knows what to do will automatically become a commander and so the first way to arise is to discern your season see there is a season where sleep is a sin there is a season where relaxation is a sin there is a season where to just have friends you sit down and talk to doing nothing is a sin it has nothing to do with hell but it has everything to do with your destiny there is a season where if you don't do anything you are already burying your future you must understand the power of season and deploy them can i tell you the reason many christians are poor today if you like pour a drum of oil on their head they go nowhere is because they ate their future 30 years ago they ate their future 20 years ago and so if god will intervene it will take mercy and that's why tomorrow i will speak on mercy because if mercy does not manifest there is no way they can succeed the holy ghost came troubled them they didn't respond the things god put them into to learn to do they didn't do any of them now they are 40 and they discover that what the world is demanding they don't have preparation for it and so even though they go there they cannot be chosen because they missed their season seasons are the first requirement for any champion that will manifest in his generation when it says arise shine it's a call to discernment if you don't have that discernment trust me you'll be a beggar in your generation see when we talk scriptures you need to understand that there are, there are many ways God operates. One of the ways God operates is by principles and covenants. He will not break them. So when we read the Bible, hid in the Bible are the secrets of God. And it is those secrets that deliver our inheritances to us. Many people neglect divine secrets and they are calling on the Lord day and night and they are wondering why it's not working. God knows you'll be a businessman. And so 10 years ago, five years ago, or even now, he's telling you, go and learn from somewhere. But you say you are a big man. You are walking about deceiving people. You're pretending as if you are what you are not. It's your future you are eating. This is the time to put your pride away and go and ask the man who knows, sir, what did you do? What must I do? And then you learn it patiently so that when the season for your manifestation comes, you'll be ready. That is the key to arise. To arise means you must understand how your seasons work. I have studied my own life. I know how my season works. Every year, if I approach March, a door must open. It's not possible that I come to March and a door does not open. I can show you things that have happened in the last 10 years. I came to understand that something happens for me in the month of March. And so I prepare myself for the month of March. I know when that season comes, I cannot miss the signals of heaven. Because sometimes God comes as a whisper. Sometimes God comes as a signal. Sometimes God comes as a device. It is a prepared man that can see that this is what God is doing. And the strength of that, he launches into his season. But if you don't know how seasons work, you may not succeed. There are many people that every three years they have a visitation. And the devil knows. And so when that period is approaching, that's when the devil brings people to trouble them. And for three weeks they are in anger everybody they are striking or they are keeping malice whereas they need to be sensitive because the voice of god will come but the devil knows that they don't know so the devil brings somebody to offend them and they are keeping malice with that person and so they spend the whole day in gossip they spend the whole day in backbiting they spend the whole day wishing evil and the angel that brought their season will come he will be shouting they will not hear 
and because they don't hear when the angel goes they will go back on 90 days fast they will still not succeed because the window is locked if you know how seasons work it will affect your life a great deal how many farmers do you see traveling for holiday in rainy season how many farmers do you see traveling on vacation when the rain is about to come they know that is the season to till the land if you travel at that time when you return in dry season which is harvest no matter how well you farm you will never harvest anything because you have violated the law of season and so the demand to arise and shine is a demand for discernment everyone who wants to shine must pay the price to build discernment if you don't build discernment you can never shine every season that comes to you we place a demand on your discernment and there are three things seasons do to a man if he's discerning he will pick it i don't have time to teach you how to build tonight but i'll give you the three signs that every season brings to you so that if you are discerning you'll pick it number one is a body seasons comes with body when a season begins to come to you or a new season is about to open if you are spiritually sensitive many times you will notice that you're losing certain appetites and you start inheriting new appetites those bodings are designed to position you strategically some of us when a season is approaching you discover that you start losing the desire just to be around everybody you are withdrawn you don't even know why you are withdrawn you are just withdrawn there are some of us when a season is approaching us it becomes difficult to sleep at night although you went to bed 9 a.m you are rolling on your bed till 2 a.m you have not slept and it is consistent for three months you just go and lie down you can't sleep until 2 a.m because there is an alarm you must pick by 12 and so what your spirit is doing is that your spirit is being recalibrated to receive what that season is bringing those who are not wise you know what they do they start watching seasonal movies so they go and lie down they start watching a movie they, that's their best time of watching movies and they will watch it till they sleep off they will watch it till they sleep off so what god created and engineered in their spirit to prepare them to receive a visitation they aborted it because they are not spiritually discerning this is why discernment is too key for anybody who wants to rise up and shine in exodus chapter 2 from verse 11 to verse 12 the bible said when moses was come of age something happened he said moses suddenly began to lose interest in the palace that is where moses had all the pleasures in the world they baited him in the morning they gave him food to eat he didn't need to do anything but the season where a prophet should arise was beginning to wake up in the spirit that awakening began to put a burden on him and for the first time we heard that moses went to see the israelites why would you leave a palace to go and meet people that are under the scorching sun under pain skoboko blala and all kinds of suffering because appetites are beginning to change a body is beginning to form in the spirit at this point he was no longer interested in the pleasures of egypt he wanted to see israel delivered he didn't know how but he had lost his peace and he went out daily he will look at the way israel is being punished and he will lose his peace why are they treating my people like this why are they treating my people like this so much so that a point came the bible said moses slew an egyptian for touching an israelite the question is what were you doing for the past 40 years because the season had not come when the season came a body crystallized in the spirit there are most of you who are hearing me now you suddenly have a body to become generous you see anybody who is a beggar you must give something you you want to go to the orphanage you don't know you are being manipulated for a season a season of power is coming and so what god is doing is to prepare you so that you will qualify to be the candidate that heaven will choose if you don't Stand to the demands of that season the window will pass you will not pick it this is how the realm works moses knew and he followed that body do you know that even though he ran from egypt he was servicing that body for 40 years until god encountered him see don't be quick to open your spirit to everything anybody gossips you you start talking you wake up all of a sudden and then suddenly all your friends are betraying you don't, don't attack withdraw 
ask yourself what is going on here i've been with water for 15 years i've been with root for 10 years why are all of them suddenly betrayers in the same season something is happening i refuse to be deceived i need discernment and then you start checking in the spirit lord what are you saying that i'm not hearing and as you press you will discover that these people are the people the devil is using to distract you and so even though they are betraying you you are walking in love it is no longer about them it's about your season and you will stay in love until you catch what god is saying bodies bodies their alarm system the second thing that every season brings to a man is warfare when you start approaching a season you will discover that the demons that walk in that corridor will begin to know that you are coming and what they will do is that they will fight you out of that realm the spirit realm is a very legalistic realm and a very treacherous realm it's men walking on earth that thinks everything is a function of luck and chance jesus was eight days old they already saw his star and they knew this is a king eight days old he was not related to anybody that looked big in fact he was in a manger and the people that saw his star traveled for months to see him that means before he was born they already saw him and does it not shock you that the people that saw him were not prophets they were astrologers from the east they saw the star of a child that was not yet born and they started traveling months before his death when they arrived he was just eight days old and when they came they said where is the king that was born we came to worship him who told you he's a king was he born in a palace how did you know you are the only one who don't know that they know men in the spirit you are the only one who don't know that the stars of men speaks about them much more than their face how did you know that he was a king where did you read it how did you see it the prophets didn't know the sanhedrin didn't know nobody knew only witches and wizards knew and the moment they came herod woke up you know what herod did herod killed every child that was two years old he didn't go for eight year, eight days old children he didn't go for one month old children he didn't go for two months old children he didn't go for three months old children he went for two years so that he will not by any means miss this child you see the level of of buffer that the devil creates to get a man a child that is 88 or eight days old the devil will go as far as two years wipe out every child so when jesus is celebrating birthday he's the only one there's no child of his age in his generation they wiped out everybody so that no matter how you try he must be killed do you think all your battles just came because you made a mistake do you think all your battles just came because men hate you battles are indicators in the spirit there is a language every battle speaks white men interpret them there are battles that you fight it shows you that you are making an error so you correct your ways and the battle will die there are battles that you fight it shows you that your light is shining the devil has seen you and so what you will do is that you start applying wisdom there are battles you fight that is from jealousy those type of battles are weak battles it is human sentiment you don't waste your time with them those are the least kind of battles when you are fighting battles because of jealousy it means those are not battles in fact if you involve yourself in that battle it means yourself is not strong if somebody is envious of you pray for him pity him it means he's not growing if somebody is angry that you are rising pity him it means he's not growing. those are not battles in the spirit realm but you see because we are most of us are babes those are the only battles we fight this person backbited this person envies me this person talk forget those things leave men we are dealing with spirits You woke up all of a sudden your car broke down they're attacking you on your job your family somebody is sick don't rush something is happening in the spirit those battles are an alarm system go back to your altar find out what signal is this i need to read what is going on what is happening here did you see the life of joseph all of a sudden his father that loved him that gave him a coat of many colors became offended at him because he had a dream the same period his brothers threw him into a pit the same period they sold him is a season waking up a prince is about to rise your battles speak louder than the people who are, you are hearing every battle is a language discern it when you discern it your life will become a wonder to your generation because seasons comes with battle this is why discernment is a must there are some battles that come to distract you 
so that you can't pick signals. There are some battles that come to make you say things that will disqualify you. Did you read about Elijah? When Elijah was supposed to enter the zenith of his ministry, he said, I'm not better than my fathers. God said, really? Go now. The anointing that is on your life is enough for three people. Elijah alone carried the anointing of a prophet. He carried the anointing of two kings. But Elijah was troubled and he made a statement that he should not have made. Until he made that statement, God was working with him. I'm not better than my fathers. Ah, go and anoint Elisha in your stead. A man is away. God said, go and replace yourself. He didn't know that that battle came. There are some battles that came to only make you say the wrong thing. Lord, I don't believe you are real. Ah, you have buried yourself. Oh, Father, I don't care anymore. Ah, Lord, kill me. Ah, you are not wise. You are about to enter your season. That's why those battles came. And so when battles come, that's not the time to talk. That's the time to check. And so if you must talk, talk what was given to you from light. That's why I say your light has come. Because what you need to say comes, the syllables are in light. The steps you need to take, they are encoded in light. It's as you ascend on your altar that you will read the scrolls of heaven. And so when you come out, when they think you will say, I'm finished, you say, when men are cast down we are lifted and then they are wondering that's not what you are supposed to say yes that's not what i'm supposed to say as a man but i saw something in light when i entered into light i knew that this is not a battle to kill me this is a battle to awaken me to a new season and so i will speak the language of the season i'm entering not the season i'm leaving bodies battles and then finally encounters these are three things that every season brings to a man encounters see when you start having encounters know that the spirit realm is aware of you not everybody is aware not they are not aware of everybody not that they don't exist but it's about relevance in god's agenda you go to bed you had a dream the next day it continued the next day the dream continued you woke up you discarded it you are not what when you start having encounters know that a season is about to be born when you study the scripture, you will discover that every great destiny that suddenly rose up, rose up from mountains of encounters. Moses went to keep his father-in-law's sheep in Exodus chapter 3 from verse 1. And he said he came to Horeb, the mountain of God, and he saw a bush burning that was not consumed. That was when Moses rose up. Mary, on her own, innocent virgin, an angel appeared to her. Do you know the angel that came to her? The angel that came was an archangel, Gabriel. Not a messenger. A prince in heaven came. Before Gabriel came to Mary, he went to Zachariah. He delivered the message to Zachariah. Zachariah doubted him. He didn't consult God. He said, you'll be dumb. That's the level of authority he had. He said, me, I bring you a message. You doubt me. He didn't say, let me go to God to come and punish you. He said, you'll be dumb until you see it. Because the guy is a prince. He has authority. He said, I stand in the presence of God. When that kind of angel comes to you, your life must change. Mary was wise. The moment the angel appeared to Mary, number one, she said, what manner of salutation is this? How can you salute an ordinary woman like me and say I'm full of favor? What kind of salutation? And the angel said, don't worry. The Holy Ghost will come upon you. The power of the highest will overshadow you. That thing that will be formed in you is the son of the highest. Immediately that encounter finished, Mary stood up and went to visit Elizabeth. I need wisdom. I know my life cannot be the same. Something has changed. You are the only one who have encounter and you go back and sleep. And so the season never manifests. The way you rise is to play to the tunes of your encounters. There are some encounters that come to you to make you a warrior. There are some encounters that come to you to make you a wise man. There are some encounters that come to you to make you a voice to your generation. When those encounters come, what you need to do is to be sensitive to the demands of those encounters. Hope you know that when Gabriel appeared to Mary, she told her, as I'm talking to you now, your cousin Elizabeth is with child. Mary knew that this encounter is connected to that matter. And so she didn't need anybody to advise her. On her own, she packed her things. And she went to look for Elizabeth. And the moment she met Elizabeth, the baby in her womb leaped for joy. And Elizabeth began to prophesy, why has the mother of my Lord come to visit me? Two women suddenly entered the prophetic realm. When Elizabeth was done prophesying, Mary started her own prophecy. And the things Mary was saying were scary. 
she said because of this every generation it doesn't matter if there are one million generation on earth he said every generation shall call me blessed immediately mary was immortalized what if she sat in nazareth and say this angel that came to me what does he mean what is he saying you think that thing would have happened it would not have happened but she was wise because that prophecy needed to have taken place so that what the angel brought for heaven will be consolidated on it encounters but you see people who don't know how to arise when the season come they are still sleeping you have a body you are sleeping you see that children are being marginalized you lose your peace but you are sleeping don't you know that was what killed lot and his family his righteous soul was troubled but he did nothing about it because he didn't know the power of bodies when you have a body if you if you are feeling weak pack from your house go and look for a prayer house stay there for two weeks that body must take over your life because your future is tied to that body when you have an encounter it's not a time to sleep do you know that some of us who are preaching today people look at us and say global apostle it's a joke some people that listen to us have bigger encounters than us but they didn't do anything with those encounters they ate food with those encounters until the life cycle of the encounter vanished and when the life cycle of the encounter finished their destiny returned to square zero the way you rise is to serve his bodies the way you rise is to discern battles and act by wisdom the way you rise is to follow the tunes of the encounters that you receive there are some encounters that will make you a governor there are some encounters that will make you a prophet there are some encounters that will make you an apostle it is in following those encounters that you become it happened to moses it happened to samuel when samuel was in the temple he heard the voice of god three times the moment he hears it he rose up and went to eli are you the one calling me he said no imagine if someone heard that voice and woke up and said ah what's happening here did i hear my name okay maybe i slept and he goes back to sleep he would have been a, a servant all his life he didn't hear it and kept quiet the moment he heard it he went to seek answer and three times the boy was not tired if you are the one you say sorry you let me not trouble my master i went one time he said he's not the one i've gone second time please oh please oh and you would have slept your destiny away but the guy knew that when you have an encounter you don't keep quiet when you have an encounter you don't remain static he went three times it was in the third time that eli discerned that oh god is calling this boy and then i told him when next he calls you tell him you are here lord speak your servant listen that was where a prophet emerged from because he knew what to do with encounters when the bible says arise shine it doesn't mean stand up it means something deeper than stand up arise shine means discern your encounter there are some people who are listening to me here you just slept in the afternoon and you saw a vision of a saloon and you didn't do anything about it till date meanwhile you are supposed to be the biggest fashion designer in this city now but that encounter came seven years ago and the life cycle of the encounter has that one thing god will do for you in this conference is that every encounter you have had he will wake it up i'm showing you powerful keys that makes men in this kingdom powerful regardless of who you are if you align to these things you become mighty your generation will have no choice but to celebrate you what are the burdens you have aborted god put a burden in your heart you do nothing about it you have bought that burden. that's your destiny every man is pregnant with his destiny but that pregnancy comes in form of a burden that body will trouble you sometimes that body will make you look for men sometimes that body will make you travel to look for places by all means you will incubate it until it comes out when samson's mother was pregnant with samson the angel told her don't drink any strong drink because the child you carry is a nazarite the body will put a law on you it is as you follow those laws that you bet a great destiny and it is in betting a great destiny that you rise up that's why you shine bodies warfares encounters they are signals that a new season is upon you and so a man who must rise must have discernment to know how to interact with all of these things when i was about to start this ministry we are just one year five months old what god has done with us even we we are we are shocked 
I just came back from London four days ago where we organized a conference in the United Kingdom. A ministry that is one year, five months old. We didn't ask anybody, please give us money. One year, five months. The place was packed. And that's because that's the place I chose. And we were not running about publicity everywhere. We were doing it from the place of rest. Doing other things and doing that at the same time. How can that kind of thing happen? It happens because you know your season and you enter. When you enter your season, you become like an unstoppable force. Nobody is too small. Anybody who discerns his season and aligns to his season can become a light to his generation. Can we pray in tongues for one minute? Some of us need to resurrect the encounter that we have aborted. Some of us need to resurrect the burdens that we have aborted. The burdens, the burdens. God told you five years ago, pray for four hours every day. You never did it. God told you four years ago, visit an orphanage every Saturday. You never went. Your today would have been a manifestation of those burdens. Elohim Adonai Elohim Adonai Elohim Adonai Elohim Adonai God has not forgotten you, my brother. God has not forgotten you, my sister. But there's a way God functions. He functions by burdens. He functions by encounters. And sometimes, he functions by allowing the devil so that he can prove his sovereignty. Elohim Adonai. Elohim Adonai Elohim Adonai In the name of Jesus In the name of Jesus If I asked here tonight if you have had a vision or an encounter in the last four years, lift your hands. You'll be shocked that no hand will be down. That means nobody is forgotten by God. The problem we have is that we don't know how God works. And we have not aligned with God. So when you look defeated today, helpless today, it's not because God didn't do anything. But you didn't know what to do when God was working. Encounters, bodies. Some of you, the body you have is so simple. Help orphans. That's all. It's not so spiritual. It doesn't appear so. help orphans. God didn't even tell you how to help them. Help them get admission. Help them get food to eat. Help them get an orphanage. Whichever help, it just say help orphans. When they tell you somebody is an orphan, you lose your peace. And you have trivialized it for 10 years. By now, you should have become a national entity. And you never paid attention to that body. Meanwhile, that is the pregnancy of your future that you are refusing to give birth to. Please sit down. The first requirement for a man who wants to rise is to discern his season. And our season comes in languages. One of it is a body, another are warfares, and another are encounters. If you know what to do with these three things, you will be a wonder to your generation. Number two, what does it take to arise in your season? Keep and guard your consecrations. Please, take time to study the Bible. You will find these things in you. They are replete in scripture. There are few men in scripture that God met unprepared. 
most of the men that became mighty with God, they were doing something, they were consecrated to God at different levels. Most of the men, Moses, after he left Egypt, had kept a dangerous consecration. That's why he went to Horeb. Detro is a descendant of Keturah. He's a descendant of the Midianite, and the Midianite are the children of Keturah. So he is of Abraham's blood. And so they understand priesthood. So Moses did not stumble on Horeb. He knows that Horeb is the mountain of God. Because Jethro is a priest. And Jethro must have told him, on that mountain, God meets men. That's why Moses kept going there. Somewhere, the Bible said, when the Ewe lamp is put out, First Samuel chapter 3, from verse 1 to 3, he kept sleeping on the altar. He had the consecration. He kept sleeping on altar. They are not strangers. There's something they know. There's a life they live. Go and check the scripture. You will find these things. They are replete. Joseph will tell Potiphar's wife, Genesis 39 verse 9, when she told him to sleep with her, he said, how can I do this evil and sin against God? My master has not kept anything from me except you. How can I do this evil? So there was a consecrated life. Our generation is porous. People don't stand for anything. They just float as their emotions lead them. And they are wondering why God is not using them and why they are not becoming mighty. If there is no consecration at the foundation of your life, you won't have energy to rise in your season. And so you must learn the ways of God and you must demonstrate your understanding through consecration. Because if you have known God, any spirit for that matter, there must be a consecration. Go and find out the consecrations that the Habali skip. You'll be shocked that we are joking as Christians. I've never seen any worldly Habalist. I've never seen any secular native doctor. They are too consecrated. In fact, sometimes civilization is a distraction to them. That's why they are in the forest. There's no law that they must stay in the forest. But they don't want to desecrate the ambience of the spirit that they worship. That's the level of consecration. But today, bishops are secular. Bishops are worldly. And we are talking about bringing light to affect our generation. When you are dealing with consecration, there are two dimensions to consecration. The first dimension to consecration is your consecration to God because you must have a walk with God. The second dimension to consecration is to the requirements of your destiny. An engineer does not have the same consecration as a pilot. That's how it works. In the same vein, a prophet does not have the same consecration as a teacher. The consecration of a prophet may be worship and prayer. The consecration of a teacher is study. And so he's not just studying to have a relationship with God. He needs raw material in his spirit to be able to deliver his calling. And the same apply. If God is raising you as a leader from the church, you need to understand the laws of leadership. There's a consecration requirement. Your own consecration may not be praying for 10 hours every day, but you may need to understand the principles of courtesy. You may need to understand the principles of management. You must need to understand the principles of leadership. Because if you appear there without training, you will be a disaster and you will bring reproach to the church. And so there is one aspect of consecration that has to do with your work with God. There must be another aspect of consecration that has to do with mastering the demand of your destiny. If you fail in these two consecrations, you will never rise. I'm telling you things that will never change until this world comes to an end. As in your consecration to God, there's a consecration for intimacy. And that has to do with purity. It has to do with reverence. It has to do with prayer, communicating with God, prayer and fasting. All of those consecrations are required to walk with God. They are intimacy-based consecration. The Bible says God is of a purer eyes. His eyes cannot behold iniquity. In 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 19, he said, The standard of God standeth sure. He said, Therefore God knows them that are his. He said, They that name the name of the Lord must depart 
from iniquity. You cannot mix light with darkness. And so there is a rigid requirement of purity. There are many people trusting God to do something mighty in their life. They want to become leaders that will change the world. They want to be used mightily in the anointing. But their garments are stained. That you are able to hide it from men does not mean you can hide it from God. God sees what you are doing in the dark. And so if you want the power of God, if it's power of God, you want to lift you, there's a demand for purity. Go and study the life of Joseph. I read it already. The reason a nobody can become a somebody and nobody can do anything about it is because that nobody was keeping the demand of purity. The guy would have slept with Potiphar's wife. He would have ended up the head of all house boys. Meanwhile, his destiny was to become prime minister in Egypt. The reason he journeyed that far was because he kept his purity. When he had the opportunity, he refused. Some of us here, the reason we are not yet falling is because we don't have opportunity. And we are fighting so hard to get that opportunity. And God is looking at us and saying, no, the power you are looking for, you don't have the capacity to carry it. And so even when the season comes, you discover you can't rise. Because iniquity will become a weight that will pull you down. There is the consecration of reverence. You can't walk with God without honoring him. You find people who say they want God to use them. God is talking. They, they cross their leg. They are saying, God, wait later. I'm watching a movie. And they want this same power of God to make them a senator. They want this same power of God to make them a governor. They want this same power of God to make them a prophet. They want this same power of God to make them the most successful businessmen. Do you believe that power? Do you honor that power? If you like, pay 10 prophets to pray for you. You will go nowhere. It's deception. When they finish eating your money, you will come back to square one. If you want God to lift you, and if you want to rise and walk with God, you must honor God, you must fear God. First Samuel 2.30, he said, they that honor me, I will honor. He said, they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. So there is an intimacy-based consecration. And everybody who wants to rise and become mighty in a generation must keep it. See, this generation where people are fornicating, people are lying, and they come back and cry, oh, forgive me. They, they will run from their pastor and call a prophet or an apostle that's far away because they don't want anybody to know what they have done. It's a joke. Every two months you fall to sin. Every two months. And then you think you will enter your destiny. The season that you are supposed to shine, the devil knows your timetable in the spirit. And it brings a besetting sin. And you fall, you cry, forgive you. Yes, God will forgive you because it's his nature to forgive. But you can never be mighty. Because you are a child. And he said the heir, so long as he's a child, is not different from a servant. Even though he's Lord of all. Let me tell you, the way to arise is to keep guard over yourself and say this body belongs to God only. This mind belongs to Jesus. And then you start doing the things that you need to do to keep yourself fervent. Because there must, you must pass the test of intimacy for God to use you. For you to rise up and become the answer to your generation. And then while you are keeping that consecration, you must also keep the consecration of the direction God is taking you. If you are a tailor, please be the best at it. Don't come to church and say, eh, I'm doing fashion designing now. Please patronize me. Sir, we will not patronize you because you are in church. We will patronize you because you are good. Because I will not wear a bad fabric because you are a church member. If you are in church, pay the price to know it and know it well. Because I will not hire you to an airline to crash my planes. Every plane costs millions of dollars. And so they cannot have you as the chief engineer because you are a church member. Because when the plane crashes, the engine will be damaged. Lives will be wasted. See the problem? Christians are not paying the price to be the best at what they do. They want to use sentiment to get position. And so the world cannot move like that. See, the people of the world know better. That's why in the world system, a man can have a business. His family members are not there. He's looking for the best engineer. He's looking for the best poet. He's looking for the best writer. He's looking for the best. And so you must pay the price to be the best. Imagine if David didn't know how to blow the flute. Why would Saul call him? Go and read 1 Samuel 16 verse 18. 
see the credentials of david they called him a valiant man they called him a master cunning person because he knew how to blow the flute so he didn't they didn't call him to the palace because he was the son of jesse they called him because he was good at what he was doing many christians are very bad at what they are doing and they are hoping that because of the grace of god their weakness should be overlooked if your weakness is overlooked it will cost your generation something today a doctor can forget surgical blade in Testament. and then that same doctor comes for a to pray for him to be a consultant how can you be a consultant leaving surgical blade in people and people are dying and you think you will rise no god doesn't work like that if you want god to lift you if you want to rise you must pay the price to be good at what you do i'm telling you this because if we start prophesying and making declaration everybody will shout and lift up their hand but the question is can god trust you to handle that bank can god trust you to handle that oil company if they give you that business won't it crash and so there is a demand of consecration to master what you are called to do you say you want to be a speaker and you cannot deliver a 10 minute speech without stuttering because you have not read enough you have not built boldness but you are saying god will lift you and one day the whole world will hear you hear you how which language will you speak will you go and start on the world stage and say mm -hmm -hmm. so you must sit down and read books you must listen to people who are good prolific speakers learn how to speak learn the comportment learn it also called consecration it is intimacy based consecration that are spiritual destiny based consecration is about mastery paul said him that striveth for the mastery must be temperate in all things when a paul stands and is talking he will wow you you will know he knows what he's saying i did my ex phd defense yesterday when the examiner came he didn't interact with me as an apostle we were talking chemistry we were talking chemistry why is your nanoparticle emitting radiation at 420 nanometer i have to explain to him that the active site interacted with the light from the uv visible and so it emitted <laughs> You don't come there and say in the name of Jesus. Sir, you come there and talk like one who has understanding. <laughs> they did. When I finished, that was when the, the professor told me, ah, Apostle, how are you? Because in case this apostle goes to be a lecturer, he will not teach them Bible there. He will teach them chemistry. So that they can go and practice and become relevant. Many don't pay attention to their consecration. When they tell you what is formaldehyde, you won't say it is John chapter 3 verse 16. What is SBR in, FT, in UV visible? It's not, that is not John 20.10. You will explain it. You will explain it. You will explain it. So you need to know what you are doing. It is called consecration for destiny. The guy who makes my dress. Become excellent at it. I can dash you money. I can gift you money. I can pray for you to improve. But what I'm... shine puts a demand on you don't go and sleep and say god will do it if god were doing it all of us will be doing well he said i know the thoughts i think towards you they are thoughts of good and not of evil to give you a hope and a future when you see christians not doing well it tells you that there's a responsibility requirement are you being blessed should I stop teaching and make declarations?
<laughs> Glory to God. Praise God. The third thing that you need to do if you want to rise up and shine in your generation is to master how to keep yourself stirred up. Many things will come to dampen your confidence. Many things will come to bring depression into your soul. And you know how man works? If you are not stirred up, you cannot deliver at your best. You can be the best speaker, but if something break, breaks your mood, you will not speak well that day. And that day may be the day of your manifestation. So there are many Christians who don't know that the arrows the devil is firing at them is because he knows that although they are the best, he doesn't want them to perform at their best. So a man who wants to arise and shine must know how to stay stirred. You must know what stir you up and you must give yourself to it continually. If you study the scripture, 1 Samuel 17 verse 48, you will see something remarkable that David did, which became the answer. When David confronted Goliath, he refused to be intimidated by his size. Look at the whole scenario that took place. David showed up, he heard Goliath cursing Israel. And he said, who is that cursing the armies of Israel? They say he has been challenging Israel for 40 days. Nobody could go. He now asks, what shall be done for the person who brings this man down? Guess what happened? His elder brother showed up. I know you are a proud man. Shut up, go home. Are you a soldier? When did you start going to war? David didn't want the man to kill his morale. He turned away. If he listened to his elder brother, he would never have become the champion of Israel. The whole, the whole idea was to kill his confidence, kill his morale, so that he can no longer manifest. The guy was wise. He turned away. He went and met another soldier that didn't know him. Maybe the reason you are underrating me is because you are my elder brother. Let me meet the man who thinks I'm an answer. And so he turned away from the man who thinks he's a nobody and went to the one who thinks he can be the answer. Because at this point, they were looking for answer from anywhere. And when he went to that soldier, suddenly and beautifully, they took him to the king. And when the king looked at him, he said, <laughs> I, I love your boldness, but you see, what we are dealing with here is real life issue. <laughs> It's a real life issue. I know you are bold. I know you are passionate, but please go home. You are a boy. That man there has been a warrior from his youth. The question is, this is my own youth. <laughs> what makes me also I'm not a warrior? Now, see what David did. In case you underrate me based on how you looked at me. He said, once upon a time, I was keeping my father's sheep. A lion came, I killed it. Another time, a bear came. I tore it apart. And this uncircumcised Philistine will fall like one of the lions. See, that's why you need to learn to keep your record. You need to learn. Keep your record. Don't throw them away. Hear me. Hear me. See the way the world works. When God does something with you, they don't want you to talk about it. They say you are being proud. It's a lie. It's jealousy. You went somewhere. A deaf ear open. Sing about it. Celebrate it. It's your arrow in your quiver. You went to a business. You are doing a business for a company. You were able to bring 1,000 naira. Celebrate it. You were able to bring 1 million. Celebrate it. They may tell you, get out. What is 1 million? Why are you talking? That is my own level for now. I will celebrate it. Because one day, what will qualify you for 10 million is that 1 million of yesterday. Most of what people say is not born out of a pure heart. God helped you. You visited an orphanage. You did something there. You are thanking God. Somebody who has never gone to an orphanage looks at you and says, look at all these proud people. The Bible says, if you give with your right hand, let your left hand not know. If your left hand is not going to know, how would we have known that Judas was giving money to the poor? How are we supposed to know that Jesus was giving to the poor? If nobody should know. Don't let anybody destroy your confidence. You need your morale in the day of battle. You need it. And Job, the guy refused that even a king cannot intimidate me. Thank you for the record you know about Goliath. But David presented two records. Number one, I've defeated lion, I've defeated bear. Number two, that guy is uncircumcised. I am circumcised. I'm a child of the covenant. When I move, God backs me. I'm not ordinary. You are the only one who thinks 
The reason I'm being promoted in the banking job is a joke. It's not a joke. There's an invincible finger lifting me up. You are the only one who thinks the reason this pure water became a water plant and is servicing a quiet bond is a joke. God is lifting me. The reason you think it's a joke is because you have not seen the finger behind me. When you are preaching, they look at you and say, how old are you? Where we are operating from age is not a factor. You know why they are asking? They want to intimidate you. They want to make you feel small. When they want to kill your morale, refuse. Don't judge me by how I look. Paul said, let no man despise thy youth. He said, but in all things, an example. In purity, in love, in manner of life. Don't let anybody deceive you. You stand up, you want to talk, they say, you woman, what do you have to say? It's not sex that speaks, it's mind that speaks. Don't let anybody kill your morale. You will need it. The reason many never rise is because battles kill them. And the reason battles kill them is because they lack morale. When David succeeded in allowing his morale to remain intact, he now went and confronted Goliath. The Bible said in 1 Kings 17, 48, even Goliath was smart. He wanted to intimidate him. He said, I come against you. You bring a boy. Is it, is it age they are using to fight? Or strategy? Or wisdom? Or secrets? You bring a boy. David carried his weapon. He undermined David's weapon. And said, you bring, a, you bring stones before me. Am I a dog? And then he went further and began to curse David. But David refused to be intimidated. You know what David told him? He said, you come against me with bows and arrows. He said, but I come against you in the name of the Lord God of Israel that you have defied. And he said, today, not tomorrow. Tell somebody today. <laughs> The Bible said, now faith is. He said, today, your head shall be cut off. And the beds of the feet shall feed on you. And when Goliath wanted to carry his arrow, the Bible said, David charged at him. How dare you? This man is like a mountain. But the, the guy was too charged up. The morale was too high for him to be intimidated by Goliath's size. Do you know how Goliath works? The Bible said he was nine cubit tall. That's three meters. The Bible said his weapon was his spear was as heavy. The weight of his spear, if you convert it to kg, is about 8.7 kg. And then the guy's shield is somebody that carries it in front of him. So somebody stands in front, he's just fighting because of his size. David was not intimidated. The Bible said when Goliath wanted to carry his weapon, he said David ran at him. He rushed him. You know this kind of thing that a little boy offend you and you are, get out from here. That was what David did. He, he rushed Goliath because the morale was intact. See, if your morale go down, you will go down. They are gossiping you. It's your morale they are attacking. You know what our morale is in, in, the, in the spirit? It's your faith level. That's why the Bible said, building up your faith in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. This is why you cannot sit on a seasonal movie. There's a destiny to catch. So what you do is to find what stirs you up. Some of you is worship. When you wake up in the morning, play the song and keep worshiping. When you are driving, be playing it and keep worshiping. Something is happening to your spirit. And for some of you, it's prayer. When you wake up, Kakosta, Abarata, Ragado, Ragagadana, Raga. You know what? You don't know where the battle will come from. The battle may come when you are driving, you are ready. It may come when you are entering your house, you are ready. It may come when you are taking your bath. Many people die while they are bathing. As you are bathing, you carry the water to pour on your body, you have a heart attack in the battle. If you are not charged, you will die. But you see, when you are charged up in the spirit and your faith level is high, when that arrow comes to your heart, rakapate krete faraka, zazazana, zazazana, come out in the name of Jesus. What should I have killed you? We go like a coincidence. Say charge, brother. He said, building up yourself upon your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Did you not read about Jesus in Mark 1.35? He said, early in the morning, before Jesus enters the city, he goes to a solitary place. 
he prays himself into power fire and flame before he enters the city so nothing takes him unaware he knew the mystery of being charged stay charged your battles can come at the most unexpected time and and you know what your battles are your platform of rising but if you are not charged you will sink a generation will rise from here stay charged some people look at some of us they tell us you are arrogant i told them you are joking some look at us they say you are ambitious i tell them you are joking do you think i came here to live forever you think this this thing you are saying is what will affect me where were you when i was in the wilderness why didn't you advise me then many years of hunger many years of seeking the lord many years of death many years of sickness you were not there now that i'm in my light you want to come and bring arrows to quench my morale to quench my faith i refuse to be intimidated if you want to advise me call me aside advise me in love i will hear you but when you talk from envy when you talk from jealousy when you talk from bitterness you are wasting your time this man is like mount zion that cannot be moved you can't move me by your talk you can't move me see when they talk and they think they have talked me down i go and lock myself in my closet i lock the door if tongues are not charging me i go back to my books of encounters the things god told me there were times at the age of seven i saw heaven open and i saw jesus face to face and i heard words that i would be a voice to many generations if my tongues can't charge me i go back to recite what god told me there are times when I go back and tell the Lord, you told me you will erase me like a fire that purges a generation. I am burning. I am shining. I am burning. I am shining. I am burning. And when I come out of that place, I come out with greater aggression, with greater fire, with greater intensity. Nothing should bring you down. Keep your fire burning. You know what the Bible said? He maketh his angels spirits, but his ministers, they are a flame of fire. There are people who are burning. They are born that's why they keep rising he said john was a burning and a shining light born my brothers and sisters your generation wants to quench your fire they want to kill your morale they want to break you and when you fall they will say yes we said it but they will never have the opportunity because because many a day that have risen up against you but you will say thou O lord are a shield for me my glory and the lifter up of my head stay charged don't be arrogant don't be sick but you are just pursuing your future focus on your future pursue it jesus said i must walk the walk of him that sent me while it is day the night cometh when no man walketh at the age of 12 he was already on fire if jesus at the age of 12 could stay in the temple for three days you are talking to a man who has lived on earth for many decades that he's ambitious no we are behind schedule we are behind schedule go and check david goliath at 14. we are behind schedule far behind schedule don't let anybody manipulate you into depression stay fired up you will need that fire to win your battles because the way the devil works is that if he demoralizes you, you will now lose the battle. He will now come back and say, I told you you are not qualified. I told you you are not choosing. I told you you are not the right person. And then you will accept the lies of the devil. But you see, when you stay charged up, the more the battles come, the more you conquer. The more the battles come, the more you conquer. And so a point come, you become the standard. Somebody give us the shot! I'm showing you how men rise your friends who are not ready to do the business you started they now start talking you down so that you will stop the business don't stop don't stop when you start making impact they will intensify don't stop a day will come they will have no choice but to agree that God is with you don't you know what David's brother told him they say he was proud they said he was ambitious but later when we read the Bible, we knew that it was the Spirit of God moving David. Because God wanted to raise a throne 
that Jesus himself will call his throne. Imagine if David listened to his elder brother. People will come talking. It will look as if they, they care about you. They don't care. Leave them. Leave them. Anybody who truly cares about you will call you in love. They will talk to you to build you, not to destroy you. This generation where people go and stand in public to paint you black and they call it advice. That's not advice. They are trying to give you a bad PR. They are trying to paint you black so that your generation will reject you. But see, there's a power on your inside. That power is what God catches on. It's a God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or think according to the power that's at work on your inside. There's a power inside. That power can take nations. That power can kill lions. That power can kill bears. That power can kill all your adversaries and cause you to rise up. But you must keep charged. He said, building up yourself upon your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Can we pray for a moment? I have two more things to say, but we're out of time. Mm. Elohim. Ah, ah, Elohim. Ah, 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 Elohim. Elohim, Adonai. Elohim, Adonai. You reign, you ancient Zion's king. Adosh, you are mighty on your throne. You reign, you, reign, you, you reign, ancient Zion's king. king. Kadosh, Kadosh. You are, you are mighty, mighty on your throne. You reign, you ancient Zion's king. Kados, Kados, you are mighty on your throne. You reign, you reign, you reign. would have said is that when you get here then the hand of God comes upon you a stone there's no way a stone would have killed Goliath and David is too young to throw a stone to break the score of Goliath even if he penetrated his helmet there's no way a stone from a boy of 17 would have broken the score of a warrior and a giant like Goliath but what happens is that when you arrive here, the fourth protocol is that the hand of God will come upon you. That hand of God is what makes anything you do righteously to prosper. But you see, many don't get here. That's why they don't see the backings of God. When Moses refused to be intimidated by Pharaoh, and he insisted, every time he spoke, God validated it. Until when they left Egypt, they reached the Red Sea. It looked as if they are finished. And Moses turned to God and said, go forward, stretch your rod. And when Moses stretched his rod, the Bible said God blasted his nostrils. And it was a blast of his nostril that parted the Red Sea. So it was not the stretching of Moses' rod. It was the hand of God. One thing God will do for us here tonight is that he will stretch his hand. Because most of you, there will be a supernatural lifting for you. You have struggled. You have asked questions. 
Jesus' light has come to you tonight, God will put grace to shift you to where you need to get to. Because like I told you from the beginning, God needs men. Some of us, the reason God lifted us up is because he needed us. We were not wise. Paul said, why we were yet seen as Christ died for us. None of us was wise to choose God. He said, all we like sheep have gone astray. It was God himself that drew us to himself because he needs men for his agenda. The body needs men. Our ranks are depleted. Look at our government. We don't have men that can speak and favor verdicts will be passed in the favor of the church. Everybody that speaks today, either references in the Dahosa or our father, Reverend Numa Opai, but they have served their generation. New men need to rise. That when they speak, the government will look at the church favorably. And nations need men. Look at Nigeria, our country. See how backward we are. Because there are no men who can bring righteous policies that will put the nation on course. Even the Christians that go there, the moment they go there, they become wolves in sheep clothing. All they think of is how to fill their Swiss account and to have houses in nations they may never visit. And they loot out the wealth of our nation, dump it in different places, and they walk around with pride, calling themselves senators and governors. Most of them are a disgrace to the name that they bear because they don't know what it means to be a Christian. Nations need men. Our educational system is so backward. As simple as my research was, I had to do part of my experiment in Strathclyde in, in Scotland. Some of my experiments had to be done even in a nation like Botswana. Just because you need a machine. I needed to use a spectroscopic machine called SEM EDX. Just to snap a nanoparticle to show me the shape. And also to reveal to me the atoms that are present. I couldn't find a functional machine to use. I had to go to Botswana. What does it take to change the education? Our lecturers are crying. The monies that should be paid lecturers, three men will sit down and share it. Even the universities, the graduates are being churned out. They have no functional knowledge. If you employ them, they have to be graduate trainee for six months to learn a job that they should have mastered. Whereas, when you go to nations as godless as some of those nations are, the future naturally appears because why the people are on, on, in, in, on campus, they are already improving on, on existing inventions because they have the right gadgets to work with. Today, somebody can study and graduate from school and he has not seen the names that they, they called for him in 100 level. They told us water is H2O. Most people didn't know how to produce water until they graduated. We need men. But it will take men that know how to rise until the hand of God comes upon them. And then when the hand of God comes upon you, you now learn how to manage glory. Because there's a wisdom. There is a warfare that comes when you enter your glory. That's why Saul never fought David. David used to be Saul's favorite. In fact, when they sent David to Saul, Saul sent a message to Jesse and said, please leave this boy with me. I love him. But when David entered his glory, Saul became his enemy. There are battles you will fight in the glory. You will need wisdom to manage it. At that level, it's not power you need, it's wisdom. Because that battle comes to disqualify you and God will be watching to see what you will do. And the reason David was established was because when he had the opportunity to kill Saul, he didn't. He said, I will not touch the Lord's anointed. He said, no man can touch the Lord's anointed and go guiltless. The second thing you will need to manage in glory is the praises of men. The moment David emerged, the woman began to sing. Paul killed, Saul killed a thousand. David killed ten thousand. But David was never carried away. So many don't know how to complete this circuit. That's why they never rise up. But tonight, God wants to stretch his hand. It doesn't matter. You can be in a pit like Joseph, but you will become a prime minister. You can be a shepherd boy left behind the wilderness to die. But you can become a king. And a king that his dynasty will be forever. Can you lift your hands towards heaven and ask the Lord to encounter you tonight? Hmm. Ask the 
Lord to visit you tonight. God told me, touch men. He told me he will change the stories of men. That's why I came. He told me he will lift men from the mary clay and establish them among princes that they may inherit thrones. Oh. Very soon there will be a shift here and some of you will be carried in the spirit. Break forth, O spirit of the deep. Cry out, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. Mm. Break forth, O fountains of the deep. Cry out, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. You reign, you reign, you reign, you reign, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. Ali Ah, Hallelujah <laughs> Are there hungry hearts tonight? Can we pray in the Holy Ghost for one minute? Can you pray the Holy Ghost? Manta Kapata Rabira Sante. I will not live the way I can. I know Barane Barana Kasiza Aradisa. the hand of God will come upon some of you now this is what the Lord is telling me he wants to give visibility to men because of the gifts that he has put in them one of the channels of raising men is by their giftings when the gift of a man begins to find expression no force can stop it and so tonight God wants to breathe upon the giftings of men father in the name of Jesus Please, I, I need you to hear and be attentive. The hand of God will come upon some of you now. Because that voice is about to become the opium of a generation. That eye that see, that hands that walk wonders, is about to be noised abroad. Ushers, please help me if we have ushers now. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, everyone you are ordaining on account of his gift, I come as one helped by the Spirit. Wherever you are standing, those watching online, right now, I ask for that impartation. I ask from the left to the right, from the front to the back, every gift here that has been quiet, I release fire. Wake up. Come alive. Be heard. Receive that fire now. Receive that fire. Ushers, help me. Ushers, help me. Take that fire. Hey, yeah. 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 you are hearing me and you are under this atmosphere you can never be the same again now lift that hand one more time i see men whose giftings are bringing them to global stages global platforms global global platforms some of you is your voice some of you is skill some of you is your talent father in the name of jesus every gift here that has a global capacity that has been buried by demons or by the wickedness of men or by the limitation of character wherever they are standing i release the fires of heaven ushers help me bring them here i want to lay hands on them take that fire take that fire take that fire by the powers of heaven i am working you Prevent that gift. Bring them here. Bring them here. Sabah. 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 Take that power.
opening for people. Listen, listen. When you see a man failing, don't make the mistake of assuming he's lazy. Don't make the mistake of assuming he's not wise. There are many wise, hard-working people that can't make progress just because doors are shut against them. Right now, there is a power here not just to open doors, but to break them. Every door locks against you. Some of you, you get to the door and it hits you back. Some of you, you get to the door and you remain there for years. Hear the word of the Lord. In the next seven days from now, many doors, doors, doors. Father, doors you are opening doors for. I decree now, receive that power. Receive that power. Receive that power. Receive that power. Doors of ministry, doors of business, doors of leadership. Receive that power. Doors of mission. please hear me I didn't have time to share testimonies I just wanted to show you the principle so that when you apply it you will get the results if I wanted to stir your faith and I share testimonies you would have marveled I'm not talking something that happened five years ago I'm talking something that happens on a daily basis on a daily basis as I was coming here somebody called me just one word visa denier of seven years was granted expressly not six months five years expressly i can tell you testimonies from healings to miracles to open doors where we're not close from here as i was coming they sent me a message a woman that had ulcer on the breast for more than eight years that will not heal dried up in three days these testimonies remain. What is happening here is not a joke. This is how deaths are transformed. Some of you may fall down. It doesn't mean something is not happening. The Bible said the house kept growing by the prophesying of Zacharias, the son of Edo. I decree over someone. Every door shut against you opens now. God will do tonight number one is to awaken your giftings and to bring visibility upon them number two is to open doors finally tonight the Lord sent me here to raise voices voices that nations will hear voices that generations will hear please I want you to believe tell you this because it will happen and it may just be you God sent me here to awake voices that have global capacity. Some of you are hearing me online. Some may even get to hear this message after now. The grace will come upon them. Father, in the name of Jesus. Listen, if God wants to change your story, he gives you a voice. Or he gives you a name. Tonight, he's giving a voice to someone. Please lift your hands. In the next one minute, can we be silent? Because the wind of the Spirit will pass through this place. Ushers, when he hits them, please catch them. It will be violent upon some of them. There's a wind of the Spirit coming here. Father, thank you. We align our hearts now. Breathe upon us. Blow over this congregation now in the name of Jesus ushers help them ushers help them the hand of God is upon the congregation the move of the spirit hmm hmm 
Hmm. I've seen a river break upon you from behind there. Take that grace. When the glory comes, there'll be no words to say. Words to say. Oh, oh, oh. When the glory comes, there will be no ones to say. Oh. When the glory comes, there will be no ones to say. Oh. When the glory comes, there'll be no us to see. Ooh. <laughs> when the glory comes, there'll be no us to see. the glory comes, there'll be, there'll be no one else to see. Oh. I'm seeing it come and leave me here, entering someone. There's an apostolic mountain. Men that shape territories, take us of cities, take us of territories. I don't know whoever it is that requires fruitfulness in the area of children even in your businesses there's a grace for fruitfulness that God is releasing now and so everyone here that was barren in the name of Jesus I command that womb to open those of you by my left can you stretch your hands here quickly I'm seeing light come upon three of you here very quickly a light that your nation will see and it will display darkness. Take 
take that light. Take that light. There'll be no walls to see. If you are blessed by this message you just listened to and you wish to make Jesus your Lord and personal Savior, kindly repeat the prayer after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I believe in your Son Jesus Christ and that he died for my sins. He was raised from the dead for my justification. I, therefore, confess with my mouth that Jesus is the Lord of my life. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I am born again. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. If you just said this prayers, congratulations, you are now a member of the family of God. Kindly send us an email, prayer at encounterjesusministriesinternational.org. You can also visit our website at www.encounterjesusministriesinternational.org.